Hello again, it's Priscilla Battel in Springo, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard. That is a 12 by 16 inch canvas. This is a paint picture with some gorgeous colors in it. I'm not sure if it will focus, but maybe you can see over there all those colors, because all those colors are in that cup. And I'm going to come back and hope I'll be in the right focus range. So I'm going to try and make, one of these days I'm going to succeed at making a scape where I have room for trees. And in the meantime, I'm going to squeeze a bunch of colors into a cup in a dirty pour-esque way, including this pink over here and that purple that I can't reach quite yet. Hang on, come here purple. There we go. That might be similar to the other color. And I have not actually done a dirty pour flip cup sky. It's more like a puddle pour. We'll see. And obviously I'm going to have some colors left again. I am not adding a layer of color to help flow those colors. So what I want to make sure is my bottles are out of the way. If I need a color, I'm going to use the Anita's Metallic. I have an edge catcher handy right here. That's good. My dirty spatula goes in the bucket, and here we go. Here goes nothing. I'm going to start really strangely. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to leave some paint for myself. I'm going to go to the top with my edge catcher on there. And I'm going to add some more paint on either side. Let's leave that right across so it doesn't look so odd. I'm up for trying all kinds of configurations to begin with, including new ways of spreading paint by tilting. I'm going to rock that edge catcher, then I'm going to sand all that down again. And I might just do what I did the other day with my waterfall right after I take this paint off and put it right back on again, because that's what I like to do. You don't have to waste paint if you don't want to pour it off. There are all kinds of ways to work this miracle. And I think I'm going to spread that as far as I can and do what I just did again, including take the paint off my tile and spread it across the top. Because when it's heavy and it's fresh, it will make patterns before it's overly manipulated and spread out. Oh, I've got a lot, a lot coming off of there. And I want to save it and use it. And sometimes it's nice with, with these less expensive canvases to uh, use a little paint like glue in that little fold in the end so you don't have to... Uh... You know what? I'm just going to add some more paint to this. I'm going to add the colors I like. I'm really inclined to add some turquoise, strangely enough, and I don't know how that'll be. Maybe I'll start without it. So I'm going to tip that over, I'm trying to teach myself how to really and truly how to manipulate these, these areas. Because once I can manipulate the areas, then I can do whatever I want as far as second-guessing how to fill certain colors in certain places or shapes. I just took some of the paint right off of my edge catcher again, which doesn't bother me. I love these, com these color combinations. I'm going to put a little tiny bit here because I'm going to be tipping this way in a second. I kind of wanted some more orange, so I'm just going to give it to myself. So this is my sky, and I will try and fill in around it with some other stuff. Actually, I'm going to, I think I can get rid of that weird mark, the long skinny one. Got to keep remembering to bring my edge catcher back, because whatever paint falls down on that edge catcher is rescuable and recyclable and reusable. And you can re use really small edge catchers for just the area that you want. Not that I'm doing that, but I could be doing that. And once I have a puddle, then I can squeeze it back down under the canvas. I can also scrape it along the edge. 
getting good coverage on my top edge. I have more colors than I need, but I might need them for something. And I think I'm just going to use an alternative method of manipulation. Before I choose to call that area done, I have to not throw my straw into any wet paint. Because then I wind up picking it up and sticking it in my mouth, and it's never a good thing. So whatever that turns out to be over there, I can take any of that paint. Where's my straw? It drips off and use it on the other side, should I decide to do that. I like watching where the paint goes and making it my decision. Actually, I kind of want that pink to go down, so I'm going to tip in the opposite direction. I'm going to take the little bit of paint that I've got on my edge catcher, put it right there, I can drop some of it on another edge catcher, and it's still usable. I definitely think that it's very, very likely that you can use most, if not all, of your paint. Of course, you can't use all of it, I know, but... So I'm going to use my Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatula just to nudge some of that and steal the rest out of the dish. There's no stealing going on. And I don't know about that. That is right. Okay, so now I've got small dishes that, that came from Michael's stack of them in the party section and they can go over almost any container you have that's small enough to go under it. I need a wet rag and I did not start with one so I'm going to grab one right now and hopefully not drip on too many things and then I have some place to wipe my spatula off with. Now where's my color? Right in front of you. There it is. Cool. All right. Now I think maybe it's wise of me to give this a quick torch because if their valves are going to appear from me adding heat it would be better now than later. I just got to remember to not manipulate my sky at all. Gorgeous sky. It's a really surreal sky. Totally. What I want to do and what I am going to do, maybe two different things. Let's see. I'm going to put a line of purple below all that. Not sure why I'm doing that, but I think I'm imagining it's sort of like something that will stop the paint. I think I'm best off using just one side at a time. Let me clean off my spatula. There's a little tiny bit of sky paint on that. And it was already starting to dry. Wow. So I'm going to spread that the best way I can to try and come up and meet what I've got. I like experimenting with adding texture and moving paint in different ways. So I kind of feel like the chain won't hurt anything and once I get puddle of paint up next to that purple line, it might flow more easily for me. I'm going to probably put some more paint up there and flow it down. If I have to stop instead of ruining it because I can only do one side, then that's what's going to happen. I kind of want some more green, and I think wanting more green is entirely possible, so I'm going to just open that green gold from Folk Art that's a color shift right now before I go any further. Got some really cool cells, and tipping the paint is going to change the pattern that much more. I'm trying to take my time. I'm going to put both the green gold and the forest green that's a metallic that has a large something coming out of it. 
Oh gosh. Okay, never mind. All over my hands now. And go back to the green gold again. I don't think I have any gold in there. Not much anyway. So every time I change my colors inside my cup, it means when I tip, I get a new section or area. Come on, paint bottle, cooperate. Someday I'm going to have a real studio again where I can actually do real stuff. Put paint bottles down without them tipping over. I'm going to take a really small edge catcher and put it down just where the paint is and try and do this. I'm doing this with my right hand, which feels like it's my left, to tell you the truth. I can still rock that. It's an unusual feeling. I can throw all that back right down so it starts to become very rocky looking. I gotta flip that around the other way. The shorter the piece of edge catcher you have above your the place you're holding it on your canvas, the less likely you are to flip the edge catcher into the artwork. And I see that I'm getting some of my sky to flow in places I am not overly thrilled about. But I think it's going to be okay. Because I'm inclined to flow sideways. And if the sky wants to go down, maybe there's a reason for that. I'm going to flow that paint down, and then I'm going to push it right back up in again. Maybe the sky will flow back where it's supposed to be. I see there's a rather large lump of something that I would like to catch before it winds up in something else. I'm going to use all of that. Cool. All right, so I've got a couple places I could stick my finger in there, and my edge is covered, and I'll worry about my sky later. I got a funky edge to my cliff, but it does not matter because I'm going to put some blue in there anyway. That's what I've been thinking. Blue or purple? Maybe purple. I liked it the last time I did it, so I'm going to do it again. Just to use my skewer. Any little sky colors that wind up in there are strictly going to wind up being reflections in the sky on the surrounding topography. I love that word. Cliff edge. Alright, still no room for trees. Maybe I'll put a tree in the middle. I see I've got that purple there and I'm not sure that I want it there. So I'm just going to dab it with my skewer and it disappears. Which is pretty cool. Alright, so what have I got? I've got a bunch of edge catcher paint. And I want to bring it back, use it up, scrape it off, let it fall over the edge. Maybe I will push it right up. Over there. Because I can. The name of my first book on the Amazon link right next to my second book called Unlimited Possibilities. I'm always open for whatever comes into my head as far as strange suggestions and that was like stick that basting brush in there <laughs> so if I put paint here and flow this all that's going to move sideways and I don't know exactly what's going to happen if I f if I put the paint over here on this side it's all going to flow that way and off so I think basically if I do that I'm going to get something <laughs> The heavier the load of paint is, the faster it's going to move than everything else that I've been moving before it. So that's my plan. I don't like that I just destroyed those pretty little cells. But the paint is moving pretty fast and I'm going to let it move even faster by making it heavy again. And I'm going to squeeze some more purple and I have a really dark, there we go, there's my dark turquoise iridescent. I need more dark. Okay, well first we're going to finish with what I started with. And I'm going to come, I'm going to rotate my turntable so when the paint comes down, I don't have to worry.
worry about saving it. And the fact that that paint is going to be interesting on that edge catcher is a really important factor because whatever I get from tipping, if there are spaces left, I can fill it in with whatever I use, whatever I take off with the spatula. I get some great shapes going on over here. I can also nudge things along. Alright, let's see what's on my edge catcher. I like how different those two sides are. They're very different from each other. And I can take anything on my edge catcher and anything that looks like a dot can then just be a reason to manipulate your paint and change up what you have there, which is not a bad thing at all. So I have a little bit more paint and I'm getting pretty close to thinking that I'm almost done with what I'm doing. And that would be okay with me. I could put a little bit of dark purple in over here like I did in the other place and maybe now is a good time to do that. Anywhere that needs to be filled in. I could put a babbling brook running down in the middle of this if I wanted to here just by adding some blue. If I have some dark blue behind it might look like mountains. in the distance, like so. Anywhere where you get an accidental drop is just reason enough to keep playing. Wow. All right, so I took my time and I want to tell you guys I do sell my artwork and if you would do me a huge favor and understand that the YouTube algorithm operates on how long the audience watches a video and if you watch the video longer, I increase my chan chances exponentially of actually becoming found again on YouTube because I've been somewhat excommunicated from the people who signed up to watch me. There are almost 86,000 of you, but only a couple hundred at a time ever get to watch my videos. So I really appreciate you guys who binge watch. Thank you so much. And uh, I always appreciate the thumbs up. So thank you very much for that too. I'm really inclined to do some things I don't usually do, which is just add a solid color. And the reason I don't do that is because you have to mix them with the other colors around them or they just don't look they just don't blend the same way I want a little bit of whoop I want a little bit of that too so I have very little left to cover and I don't really need to do this but I'm going to do it and I'm going to turn this around really quick like a bunny hopefully before the timer runs out I have all of my edges covered, except for my bottom, and I could splatter this paint all over and it would still be okay once you stick your skewer in and just, you just let it slide over the surface. You really don't do a whole lot of super, supreme manipulation. You let it slide and you let it pull paint, and I can just, instead of doing much of anything with what I've got there, I can show it to you and it'll be somewhat similar to this. So if you're looking to buy a piece of art from me, check out um, the email address under the video and find the um, hashtag number and the date of the artwork you found on YouTube. I want to tip that and I wanted you to be able to see it too. Um, I kind of want to tip it up actually. I got one minute left to tell you guys whatever I'm going to tell you. And to do any last tipping that I have, which is right now, right there, everything's moving a little bit. And I'll touch up whatever edges I have left to do and tell you guys if you shop the Teespring or the Amazon link below the video, you help me out at no added cost to you as far as the Amazon link goes. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for the thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Playlists, creative playlists. There are 10 with 100 in and 13 genres that you can find on my channel. You can also find Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter links underneath the video and the paint pouring recipe. So I hope to see you guys again. If you want to find tomorrow's video, you can always check my community page on my channel or Facebook group Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group for Students. Totes and more for shoppers.